It probably surprises none of you that the pandemic's effect on immigration intake was to cut it almost in half, it's bringing us back to levels we've last seen uh, in the late 1990s. Uh, and we know we're going to need more people on the other side of the pandemic because of population aging. But it probably surprised some of you to hear Marco Mendocino talk about playing catch up with that failure to meet our 2020 target and actually ramping up the target considerably for 2021 and the next three years to over 400,000 people and then rising. It's definitely going to surprise a lot of you to hear me say, I think that he's right and the path forward uh, to an equitable recovery is doing exactly that and that there's low hanging fruit in our midst because for every single permanent resident we let in that's an that's the definition of an immigrant a permanent resident for every single permanent resident we let in we let in almost three temporary residents most of whom come in to study or to work or do both so we know that those people have a much harder time exercising their labor rights. And a lot of them want to make the transition to permanent residency status, but they don't. Now we've been growing this two-step two immigration process for years now, and we've become hugely reliant on migrant workers, which is not our history. So I think by actually dipping into the well of people that are wanting to make the transition from temporary to permanent, we kill two birds with one stone. We increase our immigration intake, which is the number of people that stay here permanently. We reduce the number of people that can't protect themselves with labor rights. And we actually create jobs by housing and English as a second language or French as a second language. All these settlement services all create jobs. So I say, you know, if they're good enough to work here, why aren't they good enough to live here? This is the way we're going to build the Canada of the future.